me and Tamil have the same experience uh, of working with Jul, Juliano Melchamis, on different kind of levels, musically especially. And uh, I would like in this moment to invite Tamil. <laughs> Because we will say the same thing, and it's really, I don't want to waste time with the people. That was weird. I'll take a photo of this if you don't mind. Talk. Yeah, we, all, we always, as them, we like to control stuff, so sorry. It's actually quite easy. That's cool. Um, first time we met Giuliano, it was in Lid. Lid is a city that under the control of Israel, it was occupied in the year of 48. Uh, it have a population of, nowadays it have a population of 20% Palestinian minority who's living inside of Lid. And the other percentage is the Israeli Jewish uh, people. Uh, and we met him through our song, Born Here. Born Here as a reference to another song, a Zionist song that had the same title of uh, Born Here in Hebrew, Kan What uh, the song, the Zionist song was saying is that I was born here, my children were born here, and my grand-grandchildren will be born here. And what we did is we just flip it and we said we were born here, our grandfathers were born here, and our grand-grandfathers were born here, and you just demolished our house, our houses here. And that, it, what, that's the basic uh, message of the song. And we, we talked to Jewel and Jewel was very happy to, to come and to shoot a video clip. And it was very interesting to meet uh, someone like Jewel because we didn't know what the scenario of the video clip, we just knew that we we're gonna go to this ghetto, this Arabic ghetto in Lid. Mahatta, it's very a hard, difficult place to live in. Uh, it's, a, it's a place that the only entry for this neighborhood is eight train tracks, 200 trains crossing this neighborhood every day. And a lot of kids have been killed by those trains. There is a huge poverty, a huge drug problem in this specific neighborhood, the neighborhood of Mahatta. And Jul came and one day and he told us, okay, come, we will shoot a video clip. We didn't know what we are shooting or how we're going to shoot the video clip. Suddenly he asked Tamil back then to go with the, with the megaphone. To go with the megaphone and ask for the people of the neighborhood to come, to, to come outside and demonstrate. Suddenly you find thousands of people walking in the street of this neighborhood. Uh, screaming our lyrics and doing our video clip, something that we didn't know that will happen. And it, it amazed me how, how brave this man is. And he I remember the brave one. He yeah. said, Go and we went to the police. He didn't do anything, just watch from the side. So we were the brave yeah. ones. <laughs> he said, Attack, and we attacked. But uh, he got uh, that's part of our lyrics. He got. <laughs> He got uh, something that we didn't know we had in us. Sorry. No, you can, you can continue. But there's, we always uh, argue. I say he's younger than me, and I always say that I have a better memory, and he always proves that I'm right. <laughs> but we didn't go to Giuliano, actually. Uh, we had another guy to direct it, and we really wanted that guy because he's a friend of ours. And Giuliano heard of the clip, and he told us, I want to direct it. And we didn't know him. And I was really in, um, I remember I had hard times uh, arguing with the people who sponsoring the clip. They want Giuliano, I didn't want Giuliano, I wanted my friend because I promised him. And he's good. But then Giuliano said, come to my house and I'll, um, uh, I want you to watch my film, Arma's Children. And we went, me, so and Mahmoud. He, I didn't want to go even, I didn't have much time back then, but he promised me whiskey. <laughs> so I get whiskey, and Udi today got whiskey as a celebration for uh, the same bottle that we drank then, back then. So we went and he played Arma's Children, and and we didn't came out convinced to do the video clip with him. We came out convinced to do the video clip with him and to do another song as a gift to his film, Arma's Children, because that film shook us. Uh, 
And then I remember it was, uh, 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 I, I was drunk from the whiskey, it was around 2 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> and I called my uh, friend and it was a hard, you know, it was a hard conversation telling him, sorry, I'm sorry, I want to do it with Giuliano. It was really hard, a professional move, I think, which was necessary. And the video clip bored me and enjoy it. Thank you.
many of you in here were at the funeral in Palestine? I know you guys were, right? Was, yeah, please. Uh, Mahmoud, light a candle. Uh, who, was anyone else there in Palestine for the funeral? Uh, just us four, right? Um, I just want to say how it went. We, <laughs> we went to a theater that Juliana worked with in Haifa. Um, and then um, a lot of people couldn't get permits to leave Janine to come to his funeral. So then we went to the checkpoint and they drove that red van in and um, you could hear it was so crazy that day because I've never seen so many people. First of all, there was thousands of people walking through the streets of Haifa with Palestinian flags. Um, and then by the checkpoint, you could just hear the echoing, you know, people would clap from one side and as the van came, it just spread. Um, and then we drove to the, uh, the funeral site where his mother's at as well. Um, next up, I want to invite Felice Gelman, also new Juliana, um, and is going to say a few words. Thank you. Well, I have to say, for starters, as usual, um, Jules said most of what I wanted to say uh, in this interview, but uh, I have a few things left that he didn't. <laughs> that he didn't say. Um, first of all, I, I, for what it's worth, um, I met Jewel in a way that seems very appropriate, which was um, I met him through Zachary Zabedi, who was the head of, at the time that I met him first, the head of the Alaksa Martyrs Brigade in Janine. And I met this very scary looking guy with uh, a lot of guns, and he had a lot of people, other people with guns, which was not my thing. And he, when I talked to him, he told me this story about uh, a theater, and this theater that had existed, and how people had come there from Israel and other places to work in the in the work in the theater, and then how it was destroyed in the Israeli invasion of Jenin in 2002 and how his mother was killed in that same um, invasion. And I, I didn't really know what to make of this story. Um, I really didn't, I had never heard about it. I, I didn't even know even, is this really, did this really happen? Um, and we hadn't been, it was a little while later, someone said to me, um, you really ought to go to the Tribeca Film Festival. There's a movie with Zachary Zabedi in it. So I didn't know anything more. I went to the movie. And it was Arna's children. And that's where we first met um, Giuliano, uh, Yoram and I. And, uh, and uh, so we were ready when uh, Dinky asked us if we wanted to be involved in, in helping to support the Freedom Theater. But it's, um, I, I don't know if I would have, um, having, I, I don't know if I would have so easily perceived the connection between art and culture and resistance um, if this hadn't all begun with Zachariah. Uh, so in any case, uh, almost anybody who knew Jewel um, could tell you both uh, hero stories and horror stories um, about, about him. Um, and that makes really, I think, every effort to try to um, capture his personality, it's a, uh, it's a quicksilver effort. It escapes you because uh, he was a very complicated person. But there were some things which you absolutely, I absolutely totally took away with me. And I, I, one thing that comes to me right away is that, um, I remember being in Janine and watching Jewel direct Alice, uh, Alice in Wonderland. I, I didn't um, ever see the final pr production, but I watched him direct. And um, there was just one moment when um, one of the characters who was a shyster and an evil character was coming down a ladder. And he came down the ladder and Jewel said, no, 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 like, like this. And he went up and he just made one simple gesture which changed everything about the character. 
And it, it, in a way, it reminded me of the way I think about Picasso, which is, you know, in, with a drawing by Picasso, a drawing by Picasso, there's not really that much there. There's a line, a line, and yet it captures everything. And so it was just, it was an extraordinary um, quality that Jewell had to be able to transform something so simply. I, we probably wish we could transform ourselves so effortlessly as he seemed to be able to transform a scene as a, as a director. Um, but it was really the heart, I believe, of what he wanted from the Freedom Theater, which was, as he talked about, the need to, uh, how do I say it, to shed, for Palestinian society to shed the internalized oppression of occupation in, in order to resist the external oppression of occupation. And that art and culture were not peripheral to that in any way. They were at the core of, of this resistance. Uh, I also, I mean, when I think of Jewel, I think of him, I remember how heartbroken and angry he was at how children were traumatized. He could tell you chapter and verse about the children who came to the Freedom Theater, what had happened to them, what, how their, the, how their, the, the situation in which they lived had, had prevented them from being able to be fully functioning and how art and, and the, the chance to be free to express themselves created the space for them to heal, even in the midst of continuing trauma and oppression. And he was heartbroken and angry about, at the same time, about the way that the occupation had closed off Palestinian society. He, he did everything in his power to open it, and the, you can see that um, this is continuing in the work, not just of the Freedom Theater, but uh, across the West Bank. And I guess the last thing that I want to say, when I think about this day, and what does it mean? Um, it reminds us that uh, freedom isn't free. That's really that. Uh, Jewel actually knew the price that he was likely to pay. I don't know. Yeah, I, I thought at the time that he said this to um, us, and this was in January of 2011, um, he, he felt that he would be shot. And I thought that he, maybe that was dramatic, um, but maybe it was, um, maybe he was more aware uh, than I of, of the fact, as I say, that freedom isn't free and uh, that all of us um, need to find our, find our ways to uh, pay the price. Uh, it's worth it. You want to play the clip first? Okay, so um, we have a few clips uh, which Udi's going to introduce. Udi was a very, very close friend of Giuliano's. Um, and he's been working really closely with uh, Giuliano's students. Um, so, yeah, I'll take the vote from you. Okay, everyone who knows Giuliano knows that I had to come with Black Label. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first thing that I want to put here for Giuliano, that everyone can drink it. And <clears throat> I really shouldn't speak much because about Jew I can speak a lot. And first of all, I really loved him. And, and I mean really loved him. We don't love many people in our life. And Jew was someone I really loved. And maybe I'm the only person who didn't fight with because we were just laughing too much. And I'm so happy that Felice spoke about also how brilliant artist he was, because I think this is so important in the quality of Jewel. He was crazy, he was activist, he did weird stuff, but he also was extremely, extremely brilliant artist and brilliant thinker. And I don't want to speak so much about Jewel because then it will make us cry and I prefer that we laugh and I think I want to speak more about after Jewel. 
but really with Alice, it's maybe this. With Alice, he was like directing it over the den. Then we went up. I I went to be I went to live in Jenin because Jew asked me to come and I want him to teach me how to become a Palestinian Jew. And and also I hope I might get his body while doing it. <laughs> Didn't work, great body, I know, next life. <laughs> but, um, so he went to come back from the rehearsal of Alice, then we were, then I have to write Alice, but it's not that I was writing Alice and he directed. He directs things and then I have to write something, because it was <laughs> totally, and then one time when we were totally drunk with, and I cannot drink, I'm really bad drinker or cheap date, and then I told him, I don't understand, there is the uh, hat, uh, because I, we tried to create the, two, the trickster with so many movies, each character meant something. If you see Alice, it's such a beautiful production, really, visually. And then I told him, I don't know, we have the, the Red Queen, that she's like the tyrant maybe, but she's very cool. We have the White Queen that we don't want another queen after the other queen, so she should be abstract, but let's make the queen a hat because we have the Mad Hatter there, and I said, wow, great idea, and I was fall asleep, of course, drunk, and then at 12 o'clock he wake me, took me down to the theater, and I saw already a machine ready to make the queen becoming a hat, and it really happened, and it was so crazy, and inside there was people who were so dedicated, there was one Jacob that make it round, and uh, <laughs> another woman from Portugal that now came again to to work again. Like people always come back to work and did this beautiful thing. And um, after the murder, we I went with uh, twelve of his students to Ramallah. It was really trauma zone, and people didn't function. And we went to Ramallah, and we didn't know what to do. And the first thing I called our friend Adi Khalifa to take jokes, because we thought to do stand-up comedy, it's the best way to mourn Giuliano. But his jokes are not so funny, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> but he, and really what beautiful, and what I want to share with you here today, if you want, is that this journey after the murder was a journey of resurrection of the spirit of Jewel. And part of it, because Jewel wasn't only a brilliant guy, wasn't also an easy person, this resurrection was also include many fights between people who loved him and they fight with each other. It's, it's not as simple as we thought, but each one tried somehow to continue to cherish something from Jewel. And I went, we started to do Waiting for Godot, and we worked there and we did Waiting for Godot. And more and more I realized that the women in, uh, in his life, his students, his uh, women, his, uh, his daughter, they're very powerful and very have a real vision. And more and more I concentrate on Mariam and Batul, two of his most brilliant students. And I think that it's now two years after his murder, and I think that they did out of the Freedom Theater. Then the Freedom Theater did great stuff in Janin, and they are the graduate, they did great stuff out of it. So you have two groups, the graduate and the one who continue the, the structure, and it's so important, the one who break the structure and the one to continue the structure, you need both of them. And, and they, uh, they did in less than two years. I speak, Mariam is 22 years old, Batu is 23 years old. They did Waiting for Godot. They made the uh, Senora Carrara Rifle at Brecht show. They, uh, made, they made the movie Art Violence that I want to show you. Mariam Batu and me made a film that we got really great price in the Berlin Film Festival. And when we finished that, I told them, now it's really time, if you want really to follow Jewel, is to get rid of me. Try to do something, and they went back to Janin because they felt strong enough after all this journey to go back to Janin and put Peter Pan. And they, they call all the gangs together. It's like the Blues Brothers. You remember when the Blues Brothers said, uh, we have a mission from God, we, we put the band together again? They call Paulina from Portugal again, and uh, one of my assistants, and Bob, the shooter guy, and they put. And it was very important for me not to be involved in Peter Pan. And they call, and I was holding myself because I also like to control a little bit. I said no. And really, there was something fascinating that today, 
in the two years of the murder of Giuliano, they put Peter Pan in Cinema Janine, and it was marvelous, I heard. And in the Freedom Theater, they put the island, and the island is about two South uh, Africans that playing Antigone. And the dream of Giuliano and me, what we worked so hard, was making Antigone and Janine refugee camp. So the end of our film is about Antigone in Janine refugee camp, and the island came, and they did Peter Pan. And suddenly, from all this mess that we all the time thought that, because all the time I felt that we are weak. Even when Jules was alive, I thought that we are weak. I thought that our art is the art of the weak. I thought that the occupation is strong, that we cannot all the time pretend that we are big revolutionary. We are weak. We are hardly exist. And yet, when we try to put all this, every time we had a problem, Dam, Tamer, and Suhel came immediately to Ramallah to help us. And when we want to do when we wanted to do Antigone in Yaffa, Saleh Bakri, one of the most important uh, Palestinian actors, left in the middle of a big production, just left it in Bethlehem, and said, what, Udi, you need me for do Antigona with Batur? I said, you have to. He said, but I have production. I told him, sorry, you have to. He said, ah, okay. He came. Amr Khlechi, I think one, we, we respect him as maybe the best theater actor in Palestine. Four days before he's married. He said, Udi, I'm getting married. I said, no, don't, don't come. I hang up. Two minutes after, he called me. No, Udi, I'm coming. And he, he came to... So Jewel legacy, it's much bigger than just Janine. It's much bigger than just Occupy Palestine. It's even just bigger than all Palestine, but in what you saw in this film, you see people from Haifa, from Red, from Yaffa, from, uh, from Janin, getting all together to create this culture of, of, of what really was Jewel dream about identity. This, and just two, two weeks before he was murdered, we were really ready to take over cinema Janin and create Janine as the center, he called it, of North Palestine. He want people from Haifa and Nazareth and everyone to come to see art there. And in a way we failed, but in a way we didn't fail. Because all those people, we are so, and really, Dam are from Lid, and I'm from Poland, ah, it's not relevant. Um, um, we have people from Haifa and Adi from Nazareth, and we all created this thing. What I want to show you, if you feel like, I mean, we have a film that it's an hour and a half. It's called Art Violence, Art Slash Violence. And I thought to choose around 15 minutes from that, more to see Mirai, his daughter, to see Mariam and Batu. This film is not the story of Jul. This film is the story about how Jul la li live in the soul of three w young women. And, and I think it's also this film is a love for theater. Uh, I just want to add one thing because it is a memorial. In a way, Jewel have five children because we have also Keshet, that she's only the daughter of uh, Mishmish. <coughs> But whenever I went back from Janine to Tel Aviv, he always took care that I would bring her either money or something because he adopted her as a daughter from very young things. So he left five real children and many other children and many friends. And more time passed by, we forget more his craziness and we remember much more his brilliantness. There is a word like that, I don't know, but there is. So, there is, okay. So, I want to show you that you see the amazing Mariam and Batul, and Mirai, and some stuff of Jewel, and I'll just jump, and there is a beautiful moment for us, because uh, the van that you spoke about, the red one, I was there, I was there moving with the body from the Israeli side to the Palestinian side. And it was very difficult things to go with, uh, with the body. And, and this funeral, when, when we edit it, first of all, when immediately after it all happened, we thought that we cannot function at all. And then Suhel, uh, the Tamer brother, told me, are you crazy? If you were dead now, Giuliano was already in the editing room make a film about it. You know, like, move your ass, in a way. <laughs> and, and when we saw the footage, I remember Shadia, that is Nancy's sister, that you saw her music video just a minute ago, sitting in Giuliano's home 
in Janine when we thought that we were all conquering the world at two in the morning, singing the most beautiful song of Mahmoud Darwish that said there are many reasons to live for this land. And we just, I took this song that she sang in Jewel Home, added it to the images of the funeral. And the last thing that you're going to see here, I don't know how I cut it, but because we are in Brecht uh, place, when we came to visit Jewel Grave, Mariam stand in front of the grave, and instead of like, be, I don't know what, she just stand in front and gave a monologue from Brecht to Jewel. And she were crying, and my cinematographer were crying, and then of course I start to cry. But nobody stop until we said cut. And in a way, this is Jewel way, I think. So I'll show you some part, I will jump, that's just you have a taste from it. And I hope in another time we'll be able to show, I mean, I'm sure that we can see the whole film in, uh, around here. So really, thanks everyone for coming, and also please drink Black Label because it's like drinking the wine in Jesus meetings, right? <laughs>
To blame is not to complain. To blame is to acknowledge the failure, the defeat, is to be able to correct. If you're going to keep blaming the occupation for everything happens to the Palestinian people, you're going to end up in the situation we are today. We are in a situation today that uh, not only the political and the economical infrastructure was destroyed, Israel is destroying the neurological system of this society, which is culture, identity, communication. Our identity as Palestinians was targeted, not only our cultural centers, not only the villages and the electricity, the identity. We felt that uh, by creating a project which will deal with the arts, with cinema, with theater, with uh, multimedia activities, computers, websites, is the best way to fight this deconstruction of identity of the Palestinian, mm -hmm. which is deliberately done for the last year by the Israelis. I think Israel uh, is pushing back the Palestinian people into the Stone Age. We have to stand up again on our feet. We are now living on our knees. مرحبا انا مريم ابو خالد ممثله فلسطينيه من جنين جنين يوم الخميس اسس مسرح الحريه في مخيم اللاجئين في جنين مديد لمده ثلاث سنين جول علمني مسرح وتمثيل بس في الحقيقه هو علمني الحريه والنضال والفن جول علمني كيف احمي أليسي مش أجنبية أنا أنا بفرقش بين أليس محلي وأليس أجنبية في أليس في شيء فن أجنبي وفن محلي في فن هوية الفن هي هوية الفنان فأليسي بنت فداء فلسطينية تمرق مرحلة تحرر زي العالم العربي اليوم فأنا كنت بقى كي بقول لك بشكل مثلي إنه الجو والهواء من الثورة العربية اللي عمالها بتصير بليبيا في مصر في تونسيا فاتت في بواب مسرح الحرية وعمالها تنفخ على منصة مسرح الحرية
المسرحية الأخيرة اللي اشتغلناها مع جول قبل الاختيار كانت ألف في بلاد العجائب وكان دوري فيها الملك الحمراء وأنا كثير كنت فخورة إنه جول اختارني أنا إني أكون الملك الحمراء الملك الحمراء هي بتحكم بلاد العجائب وهي مسيطرة على كل واحد هناك و مثلا رؤساء حاليا مثلا مثل البراق مثل ابو مازن مثل يعني الرؤساء اللي بيحكموا المكان اللي هم عايشين فيه. لما قرر بعد افتتاح المسرحيه جول طلب مني اني اروح على مدينه الليد. So I'll stop here, I'll go forward. This is like when Jules and me started this film before he was murdered and he brought he brought uh, uh, Mariam dresses the Red Queen 248 to live after they demolished houses for 60 kids that came back home without to their home, the demolished homes. And Mariam as the Red Queen brought them to Janine to understand what is their Palestinian identity. So it's a whole reverse thing. The only scene of occupation we have in this film is within 48. But I will jump this. والحكم الذكور حسينا انه بنقدر نبني لنا مكان فيه حريه شخصيه مكان نقدر نقرر فيه من الحب في تحدي التحدي هو مش انه احنا بنطلع ضد العداله والتقاليد اللي احنا بنقول حريه التعبير هي اول حريه قبل حريه الاحتلال قبل حريه من كل شيء ثاني انه الفرد يكون عنده حريه الخيار وانس بالمسرحيه عندها حريه الخيار بتختار مين تتجوز بتختار وين بدها تتجوز بتختار وين تروح وين بدها ترجع
أن الفقيرة لا يستطيع الرجاء بعد الجن بعد أنا لم أجبه إلى هذه الحياة لكي يرفع السلاح على الناس وإذا كان في هذا العالم ظلم فأنا لم أعلمه أن يشارك فيه لن أفتح له الباب إذا نجح فقط لأنه سيكون لقد انتصرت على الجنرالات سوف أقول له قبل أن يدخل بأنه لا أسمح بالدخول إلى بيتي لإنسان لطخ يده بالدم سوف أطلب نعم سوف أفعل ذلك لقد أحضر لي واحدة من قطر لقد قال بأن الحظ سيواتيه ولكن من على مملك الحظ هذا لا يجب أن تستوعبوه قبل أن يخلصوا عليكم من يتجه إلى السيف سيموت بواسطة السيف
It was never a war that separated between Jews and Palestinians. This war is a war that separates from Palestinians and themselves. And in this day, the Memorial Day of Giuliano, we decided that we should break this wall that for the Israelis is so transparent. So we find our way to cross this wall. This way that we might end in prison or get fined. The only one who didn't want to bring is Rumi because he was just came out from prison and he could end one year in prison just to want to share his monologue in his memory of Giuliano. So we brought Rami monologue in a video and we worked it together with his comrades and friends to give for one second a moment in Yaffa that Palestinian and Jew believe in equality and freedom and high art between the river and the sea can look up and say, Jew, we are now sharing your dream. Giuliano deserves a lot more. Um, there are petitions online as well. I mean, I don't know how much they help, but there are petitions. Um, I know we're going to work on something a little bit bigger, but we want this case to be uh, reopened or opened, if it ever was even opened, um, because we want to know who killed him. Um, please, you know, watch his videos, support the Freedom Theatres, support uh, his students however you can. Um, thank you so much for them being here. They're actually on tour. Um, and they have had a show almost every night and they're traveling tomorrow, so it means a lot for them to be here. I know, of course, from their heart, because they love Jewel very much. Thank you for everybody coming out. Please don't forget we have two books, one for his daughters and one for his sons. If you can sign both of them, um, I'm going to make sure they get them um, with your messages. Thank you so much to all the speakers. And if you'd like to light a candle, please do. And thank you to the Brecht Forum for giving us this space for free. Um, and as uh, the last video, we're going to actually play Born Here, which was directed by Giuliano, uh, which is a dumb video. Don't worry, he got the right one, damn it. <laughs> Yalla. Thank you. No, he Yeah.